one important thing that we learned is when you are iterating on maps, make sure that you do not change or modify your map. Hey everyone, this is me Rachid and I hope you are enjoying the series in which I am kind of doing mock interviews for myself and solving problems real time like how I would approach them in real coding interviews. So today let's move on with the new problem that we are going to solve k diff pairs in an array and let's see how it goes. Given an array of integer and an integer k return the number of unique k diff pairs in the array. A k diff pair is an integer pair nums i nums j where the following are true i and j should be valid indices and they should not be same and a should be less than b and b minus a is k so the difference of those two numbers should be k and we have to find how many pairs that but what is a and b uh, a and b is never mentioned over here so that does not sound right the problem statement is not good over here but if this was in a real coding interview perhaps such mistakes won't exist but even if they exist it's our job to generate that clarity so i would have definitely asked what are a and b hopefully a is nums i and b is nums j and uh, i i think so and the difference of those two numbers should be k I, all right let's see examples so your array is 31415 and you have to find the two diff pairs and it's saying there are two such pairs 1 3 and 3 5 and it's saying that we have two ones in the input array we should only return the number of unique pairs all right okay so all right so it's not like uh, the nums j should always be greater than nums i because as you can see it has picked 1 3 which means that 3 is coming before 1 but we can still pick that and then we also picked 3 5 in which case 5 is coming after 3 all right and also it's saying that there were two ones but we still count that as one so the order does not matter of the numbers that we choose it's just that the difference of those two numbers should be um, 2 in this case and k in general case okay all right and what are the constraints okay so the array is it's fine not that huge the numbers can be negative all right and it can also be zero okay and the k value can be up to 10 to the power 7 and 0 okay so k can be 0 as well um all right so what do we have to write is find pairs and we are getting an array and k and we have to return the number of pairs so this function that we have over here is generating that clarity that what exactly we are going to solve. This should be the first step during coding interviews. I know that I have repeated this a lot of times. Since we have this clarity over here, I'm using lead code. They already provide us with the function. It's good that we know what we have to do. And I think the problem is straightforward that we do not care about the duplicates, right? For every number, let's say if k is three, so for every number, I just want to check that if a given number is x in my array, does x plus 3 exist in the array? If it does, I can count that as a valid pair. I just want to handle the duplicates correctly. I don't want that this one 3 is counted once and then when I reach this one, I'm again counting it. I do not want to do that. I just need to handle those cases. And it's quite simple over here. Like I just need unique numbers. And in that set, I can check for given x whether x plus k exists in that or not. I'm planning to use a map in which I'm storing for my each number in the array, how many times is it occurring, the frequency of that. How I'm going to use that is the second step. I'll be iterating on the keys of that map and doing that, I am making sure that I'm encountering every number only once. Let's say if three was occurring 13 times in my input array, but since I have pushed that to my map, and when I'm iterating on the keys of the map, I'm making sure that I do not iterate on 313 times. I will iterate on it only once because it's a key of a map and the value is 13. 
right? And then I will iterate on each unique number, let's say x in the array. And then I will try to find if x plus k exists in the array. And I can use my map for that. And if it does, I can increment my answer. And because that's a valid pair that I have just encountered and then I can simply return it. So let's quickly code that and we, we should use hash map over here. And just for people from other coding languages, I'll make this a bit easier and use something like hash map equals unordered map end comment. And sometimes I also prefer doing this because it often happens that you can code in any language you're comfortable with. But perhaps the other person, the recruiter or the interviewer is not familiar with C++, for example. So in that case, it's important for you to make your code as much easier and verbose as well as think out loud so they can understand even a new language and how you're writing code for that. So I'm using a hash map and that's why this unordered map uh, is being used in C++. You do not have a keyword hash map. So I'm having a hash map count. And for every number in my array, I'm incrementing the count for that. And then I can iterate on the keys of my map. So I can do something like for auto pair in count. The key would be nothing. Oh, actually k is already being used. So we should, we can do something like this. P dot first. And now I I'm interested in finding x plus k, whether that exists or not. If it does, I can increment my answer. So let's declare that. And we can simply return that at the end. So um, we have to check x plus k exists in the array. Um, but if k is 0, then you want that number to exist multiple times. Only then you can count that in the answer. So what we can do is something like answer plus equals to if k is zero, then we will do something, right? Then we will do something, otherwise we'll do something. So this is the ternary operator. Um, it's quite handy for a single liner. So that's why I'm using it. So if k is zero, I want to ensure that count of uh, x plus k should be greater than one. It should at least occur two times and let me be explicit it should be like that and if that's not the case i just want that x plus k should exist so it should be greater than or equal to one and that should do the work the only concern that i see over here right now is i'm iterating on my map and at the same time this is a bit tricky when you are extracting a value out from a map and you are passing in a key that's what we are trying to do over here. It's not always read only. So if X plus K does not exist in your map, it might happen that you increase it. It, it will happen. It, it might not like it's not probably it's always going to happen that you insert this key in your map. So this over right over here, if this key exists in your map, you get the corresponding value. But if it does not, this key is inserted into the map with the default value, which is zero. And that is why we were able to use this. X was never inserted in our map. So the default value was used as zero. And when we increment that, it becomes one. Not a good idea when you are iterating on your map. All right. So this should be only read only. And what we should do is actually if count dot find X plus K is count dot end. So if it does not exist in my map, I should simply continue. Right. And at this point of time, if I reach line 16 over here, I'm pretty much sure that there is a key X plus K in my map. And now based on whether K is zero or non zero, I can correspondingly check whether I should check for the frequency of two or one. So overall, I'm happy with this code and I'm at this point of time, I'm confident that this will work. So let's see if it's working and it's accepted. That's good. Now, uh, I think we should talk about the time and space complexity as well. And this is a for loop order n over here, order n over here and order n and not n log n because we are using hash maps. So that's why the this is just order one and overall this becomes order n. This is again order n and again we are trying to find this is still order one because we are using hash map. Um, this is good. This is 
overall order n time because we are not doing any fancy we are having two for loops and everything inside the for loop is order one so that's why time complexity is order n talking about the space complexity we are using an extra space for this map which we are inserting n keys at max so the space complexity will be order n as well so yeah that's pretty much about it guys i hope this was uh, fun to watch and hopefully you also got it right on your first attempt um, one important thing that we learned is when you are iterating on maps make sure that you do not change or modify your map right because that might be tricky like while you are iterating you should not change on what you are iterating right so this is very tricky right count of x plus k this right over here this is very tricky thing so make sure that you don't make such mistakes now I'll push this code to GitHub. You can check the video description for that repository. If you want to refer to this whole mock interview series in which I am solving problems, like how I would solve them in a real coding interview, make sure that you also check that in the video description. That's pretty much about it from my side. If you enjoy short written content on software engineering, make sure to follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter. For pictures, follow me on Instagram. And for programming memes, again on Instagram with the account I can't name variables. So guys, this channel has been extensively talking about data structures, algorithms, coding interviews, even sharing my own coding interview experiences with you guys. So if this is something which interests you or you're passionate about, make sure to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and most importantly, hit the bell icon. It really means a lot. So that's pretty much about it, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Happy coding. Till then, bye-bye.